A Bather by Amy Lowell Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Thick Dappled by Circles of Sunshine and Fluttering Shade Your bright naked body advances, blown over by leaves, Half quenched in their various green, just a point of your showing, A knee or a thigh suddenly glimpsed, then at once blotted into the filmy and flickering forest to start out again triumphant in smooth supple roundness edged sharp as white ivory cool perfect with rose barely tinting your lips and your breasts swelling out from the green in the opulent curves of ripe fruit and hidden like fruit by the swift intermittence of leaves. So, clinging to branches and moss, you advance on the ledges of rock which hang over the stream, with the wood smells about you, the pungence of strawberry plants and of gum oozing spruces, while below runs the water, impatient, impatient, to take you, to splash you, to run down your sides. To sing you of deepness, of pools brown and golden, With brown and gold flags on their borders, Of blue lingering skies floating solemnly over your beauty, Of undulant waters awash in the effort to hold you, To keep you submerged and quiescent, While over your glories, the summer, Oread, dryad, or naiad, or just women, clad only in youth and in gallant perfection. Standing up in a great burst of sunshine, you dazzle my eyes like a snow star, a moon. Your effulgence burns up in a halo, for you are the chalice which holds all the races of men. You slip into the pool, and the water folds over your shoulder. And over the treetops the clouds slowly follow your swimming. And the scent of the woods is sweet on this hot summer morning. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Clear Midnight by Walt Whitman Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake This is thy hour, O soul, thy free flight into the wordless. Away from books, away from art, the day erased, the lesson done. Thee fully forth emerging, silent, gazing, pondering the themes thou lovest best. Night, sleep. Death and the stars. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer for this project, please visit LibriVox.org. All Religions Are One by William Blake Read by Matthew Bodie The Voice of One Crying in the Wilderness The Argument As the true method of knowledge is experiment, the true faculty of knowing must be the faculty which experiences. This faculty I treat of. Principle 1. That the poetic genius is the true man, and that the body or outward form of man is derived from the poetic genius. Likewise, that the forms of all things are derived from their genius, which by the ancients was called an angel and spirit and demon. Principle 2. As all men are alike in outward form, so, and with the same infinite variety, all are alike in the poetic genius. Principle 3. No man can think, write, or speak from his heart, 
but he must intend truth. Thus, all sects of philosophy are from the poetic genius, adapted to the weaknesses of every individual. Principle 4. As none by traveling over known lands can find out the unknown, so from already acquired knowledge man could not acquire more. Therefore, an universal poetic genius exists. Principle 5. The religions of all nations are derived from each nation's different reception of the poetic genius, which is everywhere called the spirit of prophecy. Principle 6. The Jewish and Christian testaments are an original derivation from the poetic genius. This is necessary from the confined nature of bodily sensation. Principle 7. As all men are alike, though infinitely various, so all religions, and as all similars have one source, the true man is the source, he being the poetic genius. End of poem. You have been listening to a LibriVox recording of All Religions Are One by William Blake, read by Matthew Bodie. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. A White Rose by John Boyle O'Reilly Read for LibriVox.org by Jim Sanders The red rose whispers of passion And the white rose breathes of love Oh, the red rose is a falcon And the white rose is a dove But I send you a cream white rosebud With a flush on its petal tips for the love that is purest and sweetest has a kiss of desire on the lips. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Bird's Song, The Sun and the Wind by Sir Charles Douglas Roberts Read for LibriVox.org by Esther the bird's song, the sun and the wind, The wind that rushes, the sun that is still, The song of the bird that sings alone, And wide light washing the lonely hill, The springs coming, the buds and the brooks, The brooks that clamour, the buds in the rain, The coming of spring that comes unprayed for, And eyes that welcome it, not for pain. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. By Night When Others Soundly Slept By Anne Bradstreet Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake 1. By night, when others soundly slept, And hath at once both ease and rest, My waking eyes were open kept, and so to lie I found it best. 2. I sought him whom my soul did love. With tears I sought him earnestly. He bowed his ear down from above. In vain I did not seek or cry. 3. My hungry soul he filled with good. He in his bottle Put up my tears, my smarting wounds washed in his blood, and banished thence my doubts and fears. 4. What to my Saviour shall I give, who freely hath done this for me? I'll serve him here, whilst I shall live, and love him to eternity. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Engine by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett Into the gloom of the deep dark night With panting breath and a startled scream Swift as a bird in sudden flight Darts this creature of steel and steam Awful dangers are lurking nigh, rocks and chasms are near the track, 
but straight by the light of its great white eye it speeds through the shadows, dense and black. Terrible thoughts and fierce desires trouble its mad heart many an hour, where burn and smolder the hidden fires, coupled ever with might and power. It hates as a wild horse hates the rain, the narrow track by vale and hill, and shrieks with a cry of startled pain, and longs to follow its own wild will. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Female of the Species by Rudyard Kipling Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Chant on the 9th of May 2007 in Tunbridge, Kent, England. When the Himalayan peasant meets the he-bear in his pride, he shouts to scare the monster, who will often turn aside. But the she-bear thus accosted rends the peasant tooth and nail, for the female of the species is more deadly than the male. When Nag, the wayside cobra, hears the careless foot of man, he will sometimes wriggle sideways and avoid it if he can but his mate makes no such motion where she camps beside the trail, for the female of the species is more deadly than the male. When the early Jesuit fathers preached to Hurons and Choctaws, they prayed to be delivered from the vengeance of the squaws. T'was the women, not the warriors, turned those stark enthusiasts pale, for the female of the species is more deadly than the male. Man's timid heart is bursting with the things he must not say, for the woman that God gave him isn't his to give away. But when hunter meets with husband, each confirms the other's tale. The female of the species is more deadly than the male. Man, a bear in most relations, worm and savage otherwise, man propounds negotiations, man accepts the compromise. Very rarely will he squarely push the logic of a fact to its ultimate conclusion in unmitigated act. Fear or foolishness impels him ere he lay the wicked low to concede some form of trial even to his fiercest foe. Mirth obscene diverts his anger. Doubt and pity oft perplex him in dealing with an issue to the scandal of the sex. But the woman that God gave him every fibre of her frame proves her launched for one sole issue, armed and engined for the same, and to serve that single issue, lest the generations fail, the female of the species must be deadlier than the male. She who faces death by torture for each life beneath her breast may not deal in doubt or pity, must not swerve for fact or jest. These be purely male diversions, not in these her honour dwells. She, the other law we live by, is that law and nothing else. She can bring no more to living than the powers that made her great, as the mother of the infant and the mistress of the mate. And when babe and man are lacking, and she strides unclaimed to claim her right as femme and barren, her equipment is the same. She is wedded to convictions, in default of grosser ties. Her contentions are her children, heaven help him who denies. He will meet no cold discussion, but the instant white-hot, wild, wakened female of the species warring as for spouse and child. Unprovoked and awful charges, even so the she-bear fights, speech that drips, corrodes and poisons, even so the cobra bites. Scientific vivisection of one nerve till it is raw, and the victim writhes with anguish, like the Jesuit with the squaw. So it comes that man the coward, when he gathers to confer with his fellow braves in council, dare not leave a place for her, where, at war with life and conscience, 
he uplifts his erring hands to some god of abstract justice which no woman understands and man knows it knows moreover that the woman that god gave him must command but may not govern shall enthrall but not enslave him and she knows because she warns him and her instincts never fail that the female of her species is more deadly than the male End of poem. This poem is in the public domain. Hamatreya by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Bulkley, Hunt, Willard, Hosmer, Merriam, Flint possess the land which rendered to their toil hay corn roots hemp flax apples wool and wood each of these landlords walked amid his farm saying tis mine my children's and my names how sweet the west wind sounds in my own trees how graceful climb those shadows on my hill i fancy these pure waters and the flags know me as does my dog we sympathize and i affirm my actions smack of the soil where are these men asleep beneath their grounds and strangers fond as they their furrows plough earth laughs in flowers to see her boastful boys earth proud proud of the earth which is not theirs who steer the plough, but cannot steer their feet clear of the grave. They added ridge to valley, brook to pond, and sighed for all that bounded their domain. This suits me for a pasture, that's my park. We must have clay, lime, gravel, granite ledge, and misty lowland, where to go for peat. The land is well, lies fairly to the south, Tis good, when you have crossed the sea and back, to find the sit-fast acres where you left them. Ah, the hot owner sees not death, who adds him to his land, a lump of mould the more. Hear what the earth says. Earth Song Mine and yours, mine not yours, earth endures stars abide shine down in the old sea old are the shores but where are old men i who have seen much such i have never seen the lawyer's deed ran sure in tale to them and to their heirs who shall succeed without fail for evermore here is the land shaggy with wood with its old valley, mound and flood. But the heritors fled like the flood's foam, the lawyer and the laws, and the kingdom clean-swept herefrom. They call me theirs, who so controlled me, yet every one wished to stay, and is gone. How am I theirs, if they cannot hold me, but I hold them. When I heard the earth song, I was no longer brave. My avarice cooled, like lust in the chill of the grave. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Hymn to God the Father by John Donne Wilt thou forgive that sin where I begun, Which is my sin, though it were done before? Wilt thou forgive that sin through which I run, And do run still, though still I do deplore? When thou hast done, thou hast not done, For I have more. Wilt thou forgive that sin, 
by which I have won others to sin, and made my sin their door. Wilt thou forgive that sin, which I did shun a year or two, but wallowed in a score? When thou hast done, thou hast not done, for I have more. I have a sin of fear, that when I have spun my last thread I shall perish on the shore. Swear by thyself that at my death thy sun shall shine as he shines now and heretofore. And having done that, thou hast done. I fear no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. If by Rudyard Kipling. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Shirtigal on the 10th of May, 2007. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two impostors just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to, broken, and stoop and build them up with worn-out tools, if you can make one heap of all your winnings, and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again at your beginning, and never breathe a word about your loss, if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, Hold on! If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with sixty seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and, which is more, you'll be a man, my son. End of home. This recording is in the public domain. The Lie by Sir Walter Raleigh Read for LibriVox.org Go, soul, the body's guest, upon a thankless errand. Fear not to touch the best, the truth shall be thy warrant. Go, since I needs must die, and give the world the lie. Say to the court, it glows and shines like rotten wood. Say to the church, it shows what's good, and doeth no good. If church and court reply, then give them both the lie. Tell potentates they live acting by others' action, not loved unless they give, not strong but by affection. If potentates reply, give potentates the lie. Tell men of high condition that manage the estate their purpose is ambition, their practice only hate. And if they once reply, then give them all the lie. Tell them that brave it most they beg for more by spending, who in their greatest cost seek nothing but commending. And if they make reply, then give them all the lie. Tell zeal it wants devotion, tell love it is but lust, tell time it meets but motion, tell flesh it is but dust, and wish them not reply, for thou must give the lie. Tell age it daily wasteth, tell honour how it alters, tell beauty how she blasteth, tell favour how it falters, and, as they shall reply, give every one the lie. Tell wit how much it wrangles in tickle points of niceness. Tell wisdom she entangles herself in over-wiseness. And, when they do reply, straight give them both the lie. Tell physic of her boldness. Tell skill it is prevention. Tell charity of coldness. Tell law it is contention. And, as they do reply, so give them still the lie. 
tell fortune of her blindness, tell nature of decay, tell friendship of unkindness, tell justice of delay, and, if they will reply, then give them all the lie. Tell arts they have no soundness, but vary by esteeming. Tell schools they want profoundness, and stand too much on seeming. If art and schools reply, give art and schools the lie. Tell faith it fled the city. Tell how the country erreth. Tell manhood shakes off pity. Tell virtue least prefereth, and if they do reply, spare not to give the lie. So, when thou hast, as I commanded thee, done blabbing, although to give the lie deserves no less than stabbing, stab at thee he that will, no stab thy soul can kill. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Mill by Edwin Arlington Robinson Read for LibriVox.org by Andrew Miller of MillerBlog.ca Recorded in Mississauga, Canada, May 2007The miller's wife had waited long. The tea was cold, the fire was dead, and there might yet be nothing wrong in how he went and what he said. There are no millers any more, was all that she had heard him say, and he had lingered at the door so long that it seemed yesterday sick with a fear that had no form she knew that she was there at last and in the mill there was a warm and mealy fragrance of the past what else there was would only seem to say again what he had meant and what was hanging from a beam would not have heeded where she went and if she thought it followed her, she may have reasoned in the dark that one way of the few there were would hide her and would leave no mark. Black water, smooth above the weir like starry velvet in the night, though ruffled once, would soon appear the same as ever to the sight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. N. Y. by Ezra Pound. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. My city, my beloved, my white, ah, slender. Listen, listen to me, and I will breathe into thee a soul, delicately upon the reed. Attend me. Now do I know that I am mad, for here are a million people surly with traffic. This is no maid. Neither could I play upon any reed if I had one. My city, my beloved, Thou art a maid with no breasts. Thou art slender as a silver reed. Listen to me, attend me, and I will breathe into thee a soul, and thou shalt live for ever. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Building of Springfield by Vachel Lindsay Read for LibriVox.org by Leon Meyer May 2007 in Springfield, Illinois Let not our town be large, Remembering that little Athens was the Muses' home, That Oxford rules the heart of London still, 
that Florence gave the Renaissance to Rome. Record it for the grandson of your son. A city is not builded in a day. Our little town cannot complete her soul till countless generations pass away. Now let each child be joined as to a church, to her perpetual hopes, each man ordained. Let every street be made a reverent aisle, where music grows and beauty is unchained. Let science and machinery and trade be slaves of her, and make her all in all, building against our blatant restless time as unseen, skillful, medieval wall. Let every citizen be rich toward God. Let Christ the beggar teach divinity. Let no man rule who holds his money dear. Let this, our city, be our luxury. We should build parks that students from afar would choose to starve in rather than go home. Fair little squares with Phidian ornament, food for the spirit, milk and honeycomb. Songs shall be sung by us in that good day, songs we have written, blood within the rhyme, beating as when old England still was glad, the purple, rich, Elizabethan time. Say, is my prophecy too fair and far? I only know, unless her faith be high, the soul of this our Nineveh is doomed, our little Babylon will surely die. Some city on the breast of Illinois, no wiser and no better at the start, by faith shall rise redeemed, by faith shall rise, bearing the western glory in her heart. The genius of the maple, elm, and oak, the secret hidden in each grain of corn, the glory that the prairie angels sing at night when the sons of life and love are born. Born but to struggle, squalid and alone, broken and wandering in their early years, when will they make our dusty streets their goal, within our attics hide their sacred tears? When will they start our vulgar bread a thrill, with living language, words that set us free? When will they make a path of beauty clear between our riches and our liberty? We must have many Lincoln-hearted men, a city is not builded in a day, and they must do their work and come and go, while countless generations pass away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rain Music by Joseph Seaman Cotter, Jr. Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett. On the dusty earth drum beats the falling rain, now a whispered murmur, now a louder strain. Slender silvery drumsticks on an ancient drum beat the mellow music bidding life to come. Chords of earth awakened, notes of greening spring, rise and fall triumphant over everything. Slender silvery drumsticks beat the long tattoo, God, the great musician, calling life anew. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost Recorded for LibriVox.org by Shirtigal On May 9, 2007 Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, And sorry I could not travel both, And be what one traveller. Long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, To where it bent in the undergrowth, Then took the other, as just as fair, And having perhaps the better claim, Because it was grassy and wanted wear, Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both the morning equally lay in leaves, no step had trodden black. Oh, I marked the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sing Me a Song of a Lad That Is Gone by Robert Louis Stevenson Read for LibriVox.org by Steve Collins Sing me a song of a lad that is gone, Say could that lad be I. Merry of soul he sailed on a day Over the sea to sky. 
Mole was astern, rum on the port, eag on the starboard bow. Glory of youth glowed in his soul. Where is that glory now? Sing me a song of a lad that is gone. Say, could that lad be I? Merry of soul he sailed on a day over the sea to sky. Give me again all that was there. Give me the sun that shone. Give me the eyes. Give me the soul. Give me the lad that's gone. Sing me a song of a lad that is gone. Say, could that lad be I? Merry of soul he sailed on a day over the sea to sky. Billow and breeze, islands and seas, mountains of rain and sun. All that was good, all that was fair, all that was me is gone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sir Walter Raleigh to his son. Read for LibriVox.org. Three things there be that prosper up apace and flourish, whilst they grow asunder far. But on a day they meet all in one place, and when they meet they one another mar. And they be these, the wood, the weed, the wag. The wood is that which makes the gallow-tree, the weed is that which strings the hangman's bag, the wag, my pretty knave, betokeneth thee. Mark well, dear boy, whilst these assemble not, green springs the tree, hemp grows, the wag is wild, but when they meet it makes the timber rot, it frets the halter, and it chokes the child. Then bless thee, and beware, and let us pray we part not with thee, at this meeting day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. One as in silks by Robert Herrick, read for LibriVox.org by E. Pline. When as in silks my Julia goes, then then methinks how sweetly flows that liquefaction of her clothes. Next, when I cast mine eyes and see that brave vibration each way free, oh, how that glittering taketh me! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.